Hi everyone. Last week I did a video about what's wrong with Boeing. And specifically, I examined the question whether engineers should be more involved with upper management at Boeing, since Boeing's gotten away from a lot of uh, engineers in senior man management positions in favor of uh, MBAs and business types. And uh, got a lot of feedback on that video, but there's been a lot of new developments that I want to get into with, relative to Boeing here in this video. And these new developments have to do with the ongoing quality control issues with Boeing that has stemmed from the January 5th, 2024 incident where the door plug blew out mid-flight on Alaska Airlines 1282. The purpose of this video is to update you on these key developments, summarize the current state of the investigations into Boeing, and provide you with what I think is a clear engineering path to resolve these issues and restore confidence with the airlines, the flying public, and government officials relative to Boeing's ability to produce safe and reliable commercial aircraft. Currently, Boeing is being investigated by the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, the NTSB, National Transportation Safety Board, and Congress. Oh, also, we've got the Justice Department with the FBI uh, looking into things right now as well. But I want to start out with the NTSB. There was a Senate Transportation Committee meeting with NTSB, uh, the head of the NTSB, Jennifer Homendy, and I'm going to excerpt parts of that hearing that was conducted on March 6, 2024, and it's quite interesting. I'm really impressed with this leader of NTSB, her candor, her directly answering questions posed to her. It's, it was refreshing. I can't remember where I've seen any kind of congressional hearing where, where that was the case. So before we get into these clips, I want to mention some terminology here, and that is the NTSB uses what they call a party system. Now, the NTSB investigates about 2,000 aviation accidents per year with about 500 accidents in other modes of transportation, rail, highway, marine, and pipeline. The NTSB has 400 employees, and it leverages its resource primarily by designating other organizations or companies as parties to the investigation. And there's actually a party agreement. In fact, Boeing signed an agreement, a party agreement with NTSB, I believe it was January 7th, a couple days following the door plug incident with Alaska Airlines. So what they're referring to is part of the party agreement, entities aren't allowed to publicly disclose information as part of an ongoing investigation. However, that doesn't preclude them or they should still provide information to other investigative bodies, including Congress. Now, continuing on with this party arrangement, the NTSB designates other organizations or corporations as party to the investigation. Other than the F. AA, which by law is automatically designated a party, the NTSB has complete discretion over which organizations it designates as parties to the investigation. Only those organizations or corporations that can provide expertise to the investigation are granted party status, and only those persons who can provide us with te needed technical or specialized expertise are permitted to serve on the investigation. Persons in legal or litigation positions are not allowed to be assigned to the investigation. So lawyers need not apply. All party members report to the NTSB. And it's the NTSB that issues the report and makes recommendations as appropriate as uh, the result of these investigations. A common refrain from parties to NTSB investigations is that they need advance approval from the NTSB prior to providing documents and information to members of Congress. Madam Chair, is that true? That is not true. Does the NTSB's confidentiality agreement with parties to NTSB investigations restrict access by members of Congress to documents and information in any way? Absolutely not. And parties should not use the NTSB as a shield. Thank you for clarifying. I, I agree, but that, that is important to have that on the record, so I appreciate it. Absolutely. You have a right to that information and should get that information. Thank you. All right. Well, again, that was very direct and no nonsense, these parties, in, the case, in this case Boeing, can't hide behind uh, saying that, well, we're cooperating with the NTSB, so we can't provide any information. That's, that's not how it works. Again, they're not allowed to divulge information publicly as part of an ongoing investigation. Now, that makes you wonder, because early on, and I believe it was after January 7th, 
Boeing started pointing the finger at Spirit Aerosystems in terms of the quality control problem. So I don't know that that was appropriate or consistent with the party agreement with the NTSB. And certainly there's going to be more hearings, but uh, I want to show these other segments because it shows the frustration and the lack of candor and the lack of records being turned over by Boeing to the NTSB at this point. Madam Chair, how cooperative have the parties to the investigation been with the NTSB, and have you gotten timely access to the documents, the information, and the witnesses you need? The, there are a number of parties to the investigation. Some parties have been very cooperative. For example, the Federal Aviation Administration. Uh, Boeing has not provided us with the documents and information that we have requested numerous times over the past few months, specifically with respect to opening, closing, and removal of the door and the team that does that work at the Renton facility. Okay, as a reminder, here's some video footage inside the cabin during this Alaska Air 1282 door plug blowout from the fuselage. This occurred when the plane was at an altitude of 16,000 feet. Quite terrifying. You see the oxygen masks deployed. The individual that was immediately adjacent, uh, seated immediately adjacent to the blown out door plug was nearly sucked out of the aircraft. In fact, he sustained injuries and only survived because he had kept his seatbelt on. So it was announced pretty early on in the investigation that there were four missing anchor bolts that is normally used to secure this door plug into the fuselage. And for whatever reason, those weren't installed when the door plug was reinserted. Um, are you telling us that, that even two months later, you still do not, do not know who actually opened the door plug? That's correct, Senator. We don't know, and, and it's not for lack of trying. Uh, it's not unusual that we don't get information in, immediately in an investigation. I can point to n uh, numerous investigations where this occurs, and it takes months and months to get information. Uh, but for this one, it's two months later. We know for a fact that there is a team that deals with the doors in Renton. There's an entire team of 25 people and a manager. We, the manager has been out on medical leave. We've not been able to interview that individual. We've asked for the names of the other 25 people, have not received the names. We've asked for the records with respect to what occurred. We've asked for what shift it occurred on. We think we know what days the work occurred on, but that's only because of our investigators' work looking at pictures and emails to try to get to the bottom of that information. We don't have the records. We don't have the names of the 25 people that is in charge of doing that work in that facility. It's absurd that two months later, we don't have that. So that's pretty astonishing. Uh, it indicates two serious concerns. One is that things are so out of control at Boeing that they aren't able to produce those records, which is hard to believe. You'd think there would be at least time sheets, uh, time entries that would indicate who was doing what on a given day. You know, a worker that was installing a door plug would presumably code his time to that activity. So the other possibility is that Boeing is just being obstructionist and they're not in that they're not cooperating with investigators, whether it's the NTSB, the FAA, or Congress. You know, when the 737 MAX 9 incidents or cr crashes, two major crashes that killed over nearly 350 people, 346 people, in 2018 and 2019, Boeing was far from forthcoming. In fact, they were misleading a lot of people relative to the MCAS software that is used to control the aircraft in the event that it's perceived that the nose is, is lifting and, and would be indicative of a stall. So the software forced the nose down, and of course that led to two, these two major crashes with 346 fatalities. At the conclusion of this hearing, Senator Cruz asks Jennifer Homedy to provide an update in one week, so March 13th, as to whether uh, Boeing had provided the information on the 25-plus workers who would presumably have been involved with the door plug removal and reinstallation. And uh, she provided an update letter. She states that the 
the aircraft, uh, Air, Alaska Airlines Flight 1282, that door plug removal and reinstallation occurred at Boeing's Renton, Washington facility in September 2023, prior to delivering the aircraft to Alaska Airlines. I think that aircraft was only about two months into service when this door plug blew out. So in this letter, she indicates that the NTSB requested from Boeing the list of names of everyone involved with the door plug on the Alaska Airlines aircraft, the Boeing 737 MAX 9, and that request was made via email on March 2nd. So Boeing provided a list to NTSB following this March 6th hearing, which you saw the excerpts from. However, that list did not identify which personnel conducted the door plug work. So I guess that means they gave them a list of potential people who could have been involved with it, but not people who actually were. After NTSB received this list, I called Boeing Chief Executive Officer David Calhoun and asked for the names of the people who performed the work. He stated he was unable to provide that information and maintain that Boeing has no records of the work being performed. It's not good either way. I mean, if you take it at face value, that's ridiculous. That means Boeing does not have adequate control of their supply chain and quality documentation. She goes on to say, I have become increasingly concerned that the focus on the names of individual frontline workers will negatively impact our investigation and discourage such Boeing employees from providing NTSB with information relative to this investigation. To that end, I have instructed NTSB to utilize our authority to protect the identities of the door crew and other frontline employees who, who come forward with information relevant to the investigation. So in other words, Boeing's not providing the names and if you read between the lines, NTSB is worried that Boeing would retaliate against anybody who did come forward. So they want to maintain the confidentiality of anybody who does talk to federal investigators. So not a good showing with Boeing. And this leads to another news story, which is more ominous for Boeing. And it may be appropriate, given that they appear to be stonewalling the NTSB investigation. And the FBI apparently sent letters to passengers on the Alaska Airline Flight 1282, notifying them that they may have been crime victims. Now, I can't think of a similar episode where the FBI has done that. So if you know, please uh, let me know in the comments. But it's rather extraordinary. So this has major implications because currently NTSB is the lead investigator into this Boeing door plug incident. However, by law, NTSB has to take a back seat to the FBI if a crime is suspected to have been committed. So I'll just read from NTSB's website. In cases of suspected criminal activity, other agencies may participate in the investigation. We do not investigate criminal activity. Our focus is solely on transportation safety and determining probable cause. If a transportation tragedy is determined to be a criminal act, local law enforcement or the FBI becomes the lead investigative body. So basically, the FBI has just paved the way for them to take over this investigation. Okay, so the FBI involvement has other implications because, so back in 2021, when Boeing settled with the federal government relative to the MCAS disasters that led to those two major crashes that killed 346 people, Boeing agreed to pay $2.5 billion. And most of it was in the form of compensation to airline customers and, of course, crash victims. But essentially, that agreement put Boeing on probation in that there could be no other similar incidents. Otherwise, people could be subject to criminal prosecution. Those criminal prosecutions were, were put off or put on the back burner uh, as part of this probationary agreement. Well, now that could be all off if the FBI determines that there may have been a crime. And so not only does Boeing have to contend with the, the door plug episode, it sounds like it's possible that the MCAS de debacle could be revisited. So people involved with both incidents could be potentially facing criminal charges and jail. So hence the thumbnail. I wasn't uh, suggesting that David Calhoun personally was going to jail, but it's likely that somebody from Boeing is going to be in criminal trouble as a result of these multiple investigations. Now, another recent development relative to Calhoun is that the heads of the various airlines have requested a meeting with Boeing's board of directors, but without David Calhoun being present. Of course, David Calhoun's the CEO. He's also on the board of directors. So they want a meeting with everybody on the board except Calhoun. 
So that can't be a good sign. Now, it's been a really busy news week relative to Boeing. It's been reported by Reuters that Boeing is in discussions to buy Spirit Aerosystems, which they're currently a, a separate entity. Boeing spun that company off in 2005. So it's been a separate entity for nearly 20 years. Now, on the surface, that might suggest that Boeing's trying to get a hold of their supply chain, manufacturing, and quality control issues. On the other hand, given the reluctance or inability to produce specific information relative to who performed the door plug reinstallation, it suggests the possibility that Boeing wants to buy Spirit Aerosystems so that they can control the flow of information to federal investigators. That's my skeptical side kicking in here. And just another indication of Boeing's problems, Korea Air, Korean Air decides to forget trying to pursue new aircraft purchases from Boeing and instead placed a $14 billion order with Airbus. Now, this is an engineering channel primarily. It's not a business channel, although I like to talk about the business of engineering. But I think there is a clear-cut engineering path to resolving Boeing's problems in a relatively short period of time. So what I want to talk about is this discipline called systems engineering. So I'm just going to read from Wikipedia. It's a pretty good definition. Systems engineering is an interdisciplinary field of engineering and engineering management that focuses on how to design, integrate, and manage complex systems over their life cycles. At its core, systems engineering utilizes systems thinking principles to organize this body of knowledge. Individual outcome of such efforts an engineered system can be defined as a combination of components that work in synergy to collectively perform a useful function. Well, I think that really describes well the whole process of manufacturing and delivering aircraft for commercial operations. Now let's go on here. The systems engineering process is a discovery process that is quite unlike a manufacturing process. A manufacturing process is focused on repetitive activities that achieve high quality outputs with minimum cost and time. That's pretty much what's been going on so far. The systems engineering process must begin by discovering the real problems that need to be resolved and identifying the most probable or highest impact failures that can occur. Systems engineering involves finding solutions to these problems. So sounds like just what the doctor ordered for Boeing. Let's see if they adopt this approach. You know, it reminds me of an old uh, engineering related joke that really illustrates that sometimes engineers solve problems even when it's not in their own best interest. And uh, the joke goes something like uh, in revolutionary France, uh, three people were ordered to be executed by guillotine, a lawyer, a priest, and an engineer. So the lawyer goes first, the executioner pulls the rope, and the guillotine blade just stays fixed, doesn't release. And the lawyer points out, hey, if the mechanism doesn't work properly, you have to let me go free. And they agreed, they let him go. And then it was the priest's turn, same thing happened, the blade hung up, and the priest said, well, that must be divine intervention. Finally, the engineer gets up on the platform and points and says, hey, I think I see the problem. So uh, that's an old joke. I don't know if any of you have heard that before, but it does point out that sometimes engineers solve problems even when it's not in their own best interest. But I think that's the exact approach here. Just let the chips fall, roll up your sleeves, get in there and solve these problems from a overall holistic, big picture point of view. And of course, it's not only big picture, it looks at, at things in a very granular fashion as part of the system engineering's approach. And uh, it's undoubtedly used at these companies, particularly on the defense side. I, I know this for a fact that on the defense side, uh, companies like Boeing and Raytheon and Lockheed Martin, they utilize system engineering in their programs. And speaking of Lockheed Martin and Boeing, you know, they collaborated to produce the most advanced, best performing fighter aircraft in the world, and that's the F-22 Raptor. Lockheed Martin built most of the F-22's airframe and weapon systems and conducted the final assembly. And it says here, while program partner Boeing provided the wings, aft fuselage, avionics integration, and training systems. So those two companies work together daily to maintain the fleet of F-22 Raptors.
So that brings me to another suggestion. Why not use system engineers from other companies like Lockheed Martin, who are independent of Boeing, or can be if they're not part of the F-22 Raptor program, but they can bring these people in and get a fresh set of eyes and take a systems engineering approach to solving these problems. I mean, if Boeing isn't able to produce the specific names of people involved with the door plug insertion at this, uh, that blew out of this aircraft, Alaska Airlines 1282, they're in deep, deep trouble. It's, it's inexcusable. So they got to strip things back down to square one in a systematic fashion and put it all back together in a much more effective reliable and safe manner. Well, I want to give a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your support. It helps me produce these types of videos on at least a weekly basis. Also, I want to thank those of you who have provided super thanks. That's another way to support the channel. And also to those of you who have uh, liked, subscribed, and left comments to these videos. The, the growth of the channel has been phenomenal. So I really appreciate it. I've got a lot more content that I'll be posting here in the coming weeks. And I still have that digital download of the biggest civil engineering disasters of the past 100 years if you want to check out the link in the description. Thanks very much, everyone.